This is a this is the serves as the beginning of chapter nine, which looks at ionic and covalent bonding. In these in this chapter, we're going to start to look at what exactly a chemical bond is and how it works. A chemical bond. Let's define what it is. Is it's a strong attractive force. acting to hold atoms together to uh, form a compound. So it's a chemical bond is the means by which nature holds atoms together to make chemical compounds. Chemical bonding involves valence electrons. Or the, another way to put it, the, the valence shell. Either way, what it means is that really chemical bonding happens with the valence electrons only. The core electrons are not involved in chemical bonding. <clears throat> for the representative elements or the main group elements. The valence as, of shell, as you remember, involves the highest N value. In other words, the valence. So, and okay. So and and so so as an example. Well, actually, before I before I do that, so representative or main group elements, the the, the um for those, <clears throat> they the the valence el electrons involve the highest N value. For transition elements, just so that we we have this. are a little more complex. May involve the n minus 1 d electrons. So I'm going to get a periodic table here and just look at this. And as you recall, 1, 2, 3, 4, the s orbitals, the p, and the d. And what we're saying is that for the main group elements, the representative elements here and here, the valence electrons are, of course, just the highest n value electrons. So, for example, if we're talking about sulfur, we're talking about the 3s and the 3p electrons. If we're talking about arsenic, we're talking about the 4s and the 4p electrons. If we're talking about the transition metals, they, the bonding that, that happens with them may involve, for example, for manganese, it may involve the three D electrons, because as you recall, this is the three S, the three P, the four S, the three D electrons, and then the four P electrons are here. So anyway, so, so the transition metals may involve those. We're not going to be worried too much about transition metals in this course. Our um, interest in chemical bonding is mainly going to uh, be with the main group elements here. Okay, so note, and as you recall from, from last chapter, um, the, the, the noble gas electron configuration ends in n s2 n p6 okay and if, well, well for, for helium it's 1 s2 but what we're talking about here are for for example neon argon krypton the electron configurations the valence electrons 
have a filled shell, right? The SL L, L electrons are filled and the P electrons are, are filled. So you have this, um, this, this electron configuration that looks like NS2 and P6, whether the, the N is one or two or three, if, or sorry, two or three. If it's two, we're talking about neon. If it's three, we're talking about argon. If it's four, we're talking about krypton and so on. Five would be xenon. Okay. Now, as you recall, this, the, when you have these filled shells, we get extra stability. We saw in the last chapter that you get a certain amount of extra stability when you have a, a, a half-filled subshell, but when you have a filled shell, you get this, this extra stability that's, that's uh, uncommon, and, and, and hence, the, um, uh, hence the energetics of, of, um, of making ions and so on. Why is it that, that calcium likes to be plus two? Well, it would rather have a noble gas configuration. Why is it that chlorine would like to be minus one? Well, it wants to have a noble gas configuration. Calcium would be plus two, so it would have the same configuration as argon. Okay, so that, that the, these, these configurations have, grant this extra stability. And what we're going to do or use is this, is, is, this is going to give rise to this idea of something called the octet rule. Okay, and what the octet rule says is that when elements react to form a compound, they try to achieve a noble gas configuration. And they do this by losing, gaining, or sometimes sharing electrons. For a total of eight electrons in the valence shell. We're going to use this octet rule as we go to, to, to look at, at these things. And, and so we're going to be, so, so elements are going to react, they're going to lose, gain, or share electrons to make it so that they have a valence shell that's like a noble gas configuration, hence we call it the octet rule. I know that we, we so, so yes, so um, uh, um, we're going to look at two different types of bonding that happen to make it so that elements, when they form compounds, can satisfy the octet rule. One of them is called ionic bonding. We'll look at that in the next two uh, videos. And the other one is called, or the other type of bonding is called covalent bonding. We'll look at that in the latter part of this chapter.